I have my telephone popper jobber. You know, that thing. Nestled ever so gently into the perfect crotch, crux, V of a tree. I mean, just perfect. And this is where, right where I want it to be, too. Right here, a spot I discovered but a few days ago. But a mere few moons. I've got my favorite little soul companion with me. And there are spiders. And I'm freaked out. But we're just going to be in harmony with them. <laughs> um, today's everything is inspired by a theatrical mentor of mine who not only predicted every detail of the pandemic, I mean, every one of them, about 12, 13 years ago, I've told that story, but he lifted me today. He found a piece of me, he talked about how one of the most important questions he asked to spirit was, what is your language? and it told him to study sacred geometry. So this is my infinity star uh, rubbing stone. Why can't I think of it? It's something blue tiger's eye, I think. I believe it's blue tiger's eye. Wish I could just nail it for you. Oh, Gizmo's sniffing something in the tree which makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> but I'm at peace with it, I'm at peace with it. I was thinking a lot and I spoke to this mentor, soul beacon of mine, told him that I was adding a line to every line he said and making it rhyme and making it poetry and asked his permission. We both cried, I think three or four times in our conversation. He's been guiding me on stage since I was ba -ba -ba, 19. <laughs> 19 going on 20 don't know what in the hell <laughs> still don't but that's okay i know a lot i have many heart thoughts and beats and treats and i need to start straying away from the defeat the defeat there are some yos and bros just so you know also in this picture that we're in i was i found my my little groove in it and then uh, heard some yelling and broing but we can we can go rowing with that too and it's much too hot for this um, I feel like especially with everyone saying you can't I don't know can't wear anything that isn't your culture which I totally disagree with and I've spoken to this that many of the spiritual gifts I've been given in life are in the form of fashion because people see me and see that my soul speaks the language of fashion and for example at a uh, gathering of circus lovers, this Indian fairy gave this to me. So it means something. And so my soul feels okay to wear it. <laughs> but I do think I wanted to address and did so with this mentor, the idea of spiritual ego and spiritual arrogance, because that exists too. And I talked to my best friend on this very trail the other day about this knowing that I've always had psychic leanings and tendencies and predicted the births of seven of my friends' children and their gender and who they would be like, no big deal, but that sort of thing. And still haven't done my piece about the heart characters, but I've done 90 to 200 of those. Can't even, I don't even know. I lost track, I guess. Deeply going in someone's heart and finding the past or current soul that lives there. Complicated, we'll go into it later. But I've never charged a penny. I've been given paintings. I've been given scrolls. I've been given kisses. You know, it took a long time. It took probably 80 heart character readings to... I mean, it was usually just to seek spirit and to give spirit, but occasionally it was because I just wanted to get someone to lay down and show me their heart. And yeah, sometimes I didn't like what I saw. And sometimes... I saw something they'd always been hiding and never told anyone and dreamed about. I mean, it gets, it gets, it gets rich in its texture, and I'll bring it to you soon. Uh, early in the wee morning hours of tomorrow, but still the kind of yesternight will be the uh, blood flower eclipse moon. So I hear there's to be clouds around here, and I'm very upset gonna try I'm gonna try to capture it in the wee hours and find it hey birdie 
Uh, but yeah, the moon just got things to tell us, tunes for us to tune into. Um, yeah, spiritual arrogance. I was thinking about that, diving into that. Ran into a gal, a lady pal, I thought, so I thought, on the trail the other day, different trail, river trail. Someone I thought I was grooving with, in the groove with, in a way that we were swaying this way in our knowing of each other from moment one, really. And then the pandemic came up as it does, because it will and is going to. <laughs> and this concept came out from her like, well, we've just been loving on our friends, very hippy dippy outfit, much like this. Yes, there are different spectrums of everything. We've been through this, but you know, this concept of, uh, well, we've just been loving on our friends the whole entire time and got together with our relatives at the holidays and that's our prerogative. We just took vitamins and our priorities, loving on each other was a statement. Um, so that pushed me back a bit. I just got to say, there's a lot of, we talked about yesterday and that was a lot of farce and fun and you know, <laughs> I don't take any of my bazillion parts too seriously. And yes, there are many facets of me, but I like to say I'm a beginner in all realms, not trying to be at the helm or like, I'm the guru, follow me. I just tap into what I can tap into. And sometimes it's pretty nifty, but it's with love. It's with such integrity. And I don't know. I just, there's this, well, we are, our chakras are too cleansed for the virus attitude that I'm like, you really feel that way? And she was also letting her dogs just run wild and attack each other and a puppy and a big dog and my dog's been attacked. So he was like traumatized. And it's that, well, but let them be free, you know, let them be free. And you would look at me and think like I'm, but I, I swing on that strange pendulum. And that's the fun. I was talking to this spiritual guide. I would really call him friend of mine well-respected human other <laughs> planetary kindred type um, he just led me to push some buttons to choose some versions of me that were better than the ones that I've been choosing yeah so that's why I'm here in this little spot and I felt compelled at the last thought to grab these from my backyard. Gosh, they, the sweetness is the sweetest of sweetness. So yeah, I just think we should do everything we do, pursue everything we pursue with humility and a nice heaping sprinkle of humble pie spice. <laughs> just think that would be nice. And I don't feel that. I feel like, no, this is the way it is. Hard line. Even if, if it's spiritual realm or mind narrowed bend in the road uh, yeah I'm just trying to do it in a different way I guess than saying this is it this is the only answer there are infinite answers that's the fun of it so we out here sniffing lilacs coming at you with this amazing psychedelic birthday towel but you can't really see it but there it is all the same. And what use is there for a name when one floats through a garden such as this? I'm on a real steep incline, so that's fun. I wanted you to see the spiritual floating, you know, 101. But anyway, it's hard to mind meld. It really is hard to mind meld with anyone these days with any success. And I did that today and it felt good. It's been a while since I dove into that cave of phosphorescence and pleasantness and a little self-confidence. It feels good to tap that, remind it to wake up every once in a while. What do I got? I got geese and herons prepare on this poetry backdrop for thee and thee and thee and yes even he even she even they even we 
these beautiful hawks flying overhead. And I'm going to bring you some bread and butter called poetry for you to snack upon, and sup upon. I always love the word sup. To sup upon. I wish you could see this guy better. Because it's like, I'm telling you, the tree groove, it's just right for this, this locale. So I'll just have to get this guy up here in the story a little bit. It just feels so good right now. There are a couple random people being like, is she talking to herself? Is she talking to a tree? I hope she's not talking to a tree. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> so, this poetry today is pretty much 50-50, half what this great guide of my strange, strange tribe friend and mentor. Half of it is him and half of it is me elaborating on what he led me to and coloring it more, <laughs> making it rhyme. But yeah, I wanted to imprint it in time today. Will you drink a little bit more water? Can you? He always acts like he's thirsty. That's <laughs> And he's like, oh, no, no, thank you. Sometimes we're led to the water and we don't drink. There's that deep thinky think. <sighs> I'm doing some pretty massively stressful human stuff later. I'm not even going to bring it into this space right now, but I'm so glad for these words today. I'm going to pray on these words. These words feel good to swish in my existence. Today's poem is called Unspoken messages as music, recovering your truth and how to use it, 101. The machines have led so many, pushed so many to the spiritual void. It's like they want their inner essence destroyed. People maintain neutral faces when they hear about weapons deployed on other humans they don't have to tune in unless it impedes their backyard barbecue. Observe others for any stretch of time and you can find exactly what they value. The masses seem more and more to unwittingly salute the unnamed, overarching, deranged, and empirical. Everybody trying to sell you on what they're pushing and when your eyes are open, every channel and every dot com feels inimical. Not even trying to sound cynical, but I see the cyclical nature and we're headed to the opposite direction of the deeper truths. I can't watch the network news because I choose to see past all the crashing, colliding views so much is disallowing our radar for truth. When you get in here, really put on your tall boots to go trudging through your soul. When you behold the work that's got to be done to get you on the trip you wish to be on and out of the crowded wait station, well, you actually do that work. Go within. That moment you are awake, that you are you, it's not creation, it's emulation. It's emanation upon emanation. You are a stream in the ocean, but that isn't small. It is connected to all, to every single drop. When I actually stop succumbing to the noise and go hunting for the joys, I know all that is perceived and believed seen and unseen, lit and unlit. It's a symphonic masterpiece and you are a brilliant motif inside it. Ride it, hear it, choose it. You are granted sovereignty in that infinite moment of music. All energy and nameless messages come through as music. Love is not just skipping through the tulips. It will break down, as all things do. People don't consider that. But that's where fortification comes in and allows even the dissolved particles to become something new. 
Love isn't a granted wish or some specialty dish only fed to the chosen VIPs. It's the structure inside of you and me. Holding our blood and guts. It is the pulse, the soft touch, and the painful cuts. It's as much a form as it is a concept and a feeling. Love is not mamby-pamby. It holds the entire universe together, and it has no use for some old construct like a floor or a ceiling. It's swaddling us gently and also forcefully peeling us like a banana not yet ripe. Some choose code, others choose light. Some reach for a hand, some just obsessively swipe. Just because the human heat, ha, the human heat is shifting, but just because the human heart is shifting to the start of robotization doesn't mean you can't choose to fight it. We took a wrong curve for sure doesn't mean we can't set it right. It's scary, no doubt. Soul becomes structure. Those who suffer are handed distraction and policy. It's needing a sip and ripping the cover off the fire hydrant. Those who aren't compliant are cut off without apology. It's the full speed cocooning of technology. This world is a projection of frequency. The distortion of human perception is deep in its elaborate sequencing. A giant computer virus with no imagination, a mimic hardwired with no beautiful desires and no regard to the inevitable outcome when the pendulum swings. And oh, it swings. Do the angels even remember how to sing? The old gods so loved for constant proof of our love. Is our flagrant parading of that sentiment a heartfelt offering or a self-profiting vice? Are not wars just a huge blood sacrifice? We are unmasking cycles and their hidden price. And sadly, most are glad to feast right now and worry some other day about how to pay. These newfangled frequencies need more relays. They don't travel very far. Children trying to catch 5G signals in a jar. We feel the terrible grip and ignore the intensifying squeeze. The body is all frequencies. Most people have lost their instinct to seek guidance from the trees. These degrees of amplification are suddenly supersonic. Dig in beyond it. Seek coherence and harmonics. Many have no patience with which to discern. You do. So dive into nautilus patterns. How do the plants grow? What are the current coordinates of Saturn? This matters. There is more space in a molecule than there is substance. Our physical brain is a whole process, and if we really learn it, it's anything but redundant. There's a higher function in everything. You can see what is, at a basic level, presented as being there. Or you can see what's possible beyond it, to grab hold of the very air. I affirm my next step through challenging what's real, the pain, the despair, the struggle, whatever it may be, rather than defaulting to accepting it helplessly, melt into the energetic coherence. The more we can focus on the reality that exists underneath the physical world, find balance beyond mere appearances, the more will unfurl, the more in control we can feel, the clearer the opening is. I know I have slid into Gnostic fountains. There truly is little left to count on, but I know 
what doesn't show itself so readily, that mystery brings you steadily to a better soul fit. Those are things that extend beyond belief. Belief is what you stand on, but you have to work to fortify it. Try it. Ask for help. If you cannot get there by yourself to where you want to go, which is so much more common a conundrum than you can ever know, ask for help. Ask for directions. Take the path in sections. Bring a shield. When you have a huge emotional field, beautiful flowers can grow indeed, but so can lots of gnarly weeds. It's overwhelming, but you have to tend to that space, all of it. Don't get panicked. Take pauses and breathe. And if that expanse is huge, gee, you are so lucky because you can wander and feel and see so much. You can even touch. But it's also a double-edged point you clutch because you have vastly more to tend to. You can't let it get overgrown and neglected or bend to someone else's vision of its possibility. Your gift is an immense field but you also have a bigger job to protect it eminently. Compassion has to always be at play, but that doesn't mean that you just let everyone come romp in that precious field as they may. You might be missing directional arrows or lacking them, and the first step to finding more is honoring yourself now, today. People treat that act like an indulgence because they've become numb to prioris prioritizing, prioritizing, prioritizing that action. But you must know how vital it is to soul satisfaction. The constant distraction away from these goals can easily take hold and impede you by means of greed and bureaucracy, the shockingly accepted pull of corporatocracy, technocracy. Yet we who see cannot unsee it. Holding your truth is no small task. Like holding a holy mass in a monsoon, trying to keep your candle lit. But when you feel you need that assistance, do ask. Just existing now requires so many more demands and tasks and tasks. We shove our self-worth aside until the very sense of it is a blur. There should be a line for everyone in that regard that defines here and no further. But it's hard. People think their social media profile is them. It's like the actor becoming the character and forgetting to check in to ask themselves, but wait, who is the actor? The Oribus of energy, the universe's trash compactor. You must endure the pressure to protect that territory of who you actually are. To let it get too far from you is very dangerous. The hypnotic noise trying to slowly destroy us is clamorous and hell-bent. We're living with more discouragement than encouragement. But there was a soul choice made for you to enter this bizarre production. And it changes the story when your voice is lent to it. We don't get to know before the curtain goes up or down exactly what was meant by the script. A line or two may have slipped your mind, but if you gave it your true depth, there will still be autographs to sign. You can't have empathy and not see the atrocities, but because you chose it, you musk, you musk. <laughs> You must, with a T. <sighs> you must seek the beauty you can indeed find. Proclaim, I will not reject the truth as it comes to me. Repeat it a million or more times. Be the voice crying in the wilderness for a sign. You may not see the result of it. You may not see the result of any of it. But when you need to wail to the moon, do so knowing she hears you, even if no mortal chooses to. You may not see the result of who you are. You cannot be attached to seeing the results, just like you cannot know the fate of each star. 
if you hide out right where you're at or venture far, you will be trod upon until you demand that no one will get away with stepping on you like that. And fact is, neither party learns a thing if you submit to what you know is wrong. Just like there are only so many notes to make a song. Patterns are recurring. You've seen that all along, only you can fix it. Others will only reinforce that repetition if you let them and they'll take you they'll take of you bit by bit. Communication with the higher function of your consciousness is not as simple as shooting out a text. It takes deeper work. The glint of light sometimes only breaks through the murk when you feel most helpless and hopeless. Stress is a signal to reconstruct, to seek harmonies, subtle To not need an outer source of joy, that's freedom. If you're looking externally for that lift, you will feel mad and robbed of all your gifts. The outer world's propensity to shift on a dime has the tendency to maim and mar. No one is bound to this planet and its rules. We only think we are. Before I woke up, when I was younger than you, I was going on about some self-critical rag, and out of the absolute blue, a message came through to say loudly, I have never loved you because you were worthy. I have loved you always and will love you through infinity. That's how I'm able to give you the message, because I listened and summoned the true me. I hope you do too that you allow access to yourself fully. Find those areas you have not allowed love from yourself and you have allowed others to starve you of love or be a love bully. When you target that, you will not allow that lack of love or let love sources be sullied or deflected. The world needs you to be connected. The worst thing you can do is disconnect. I know it's tempting, but when you see that door that depletes rather than restores, I implore you not to select it. Choose the doors that illuminate your pure self and illuminate that abundant, intangible wealth. That's, that's my brain for today as the geese soar away. That was a really nice way to pray. That's how it felt. Come on, bud. So I'm gonna go give this little fella a real walk, because that's what he came to this party for. <laughs> um, thank you. That felt, that felt real and a wonderful fruit to peel. <laughs> That's the real deal. It came through in such lovely radio waves. And then I carved something out of it. Hooray! <laughs> so we'll uh, stand because our legs and feet are totally asleep and we'll just do a little do a little reach reach <laughs> this groovy brighten up your life skirt okay I'm gonna go flirt with the green grass and the trees and this sassafras and all the birds and all the big bumblebees and the herons and even the fleas though I tell them to stay away from me <laughs> And the jumping fish, <laughs> you heard it. The jumping fish and the many wishes waiting to be wished. You've got a talker. Okay. 
I love you all for hearing me. Find a place to be in you. It feels good and like a way through. You can. There are those there are those doors in the great hallway of wandering. Just open them up. Fill your cup. <laughs> so full. Cool.